of me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance, and the very ends of the earth as your possession. Psalm 2, verse 8. So why have I come here to the big island of Hawaii, to Kona, to this missions sending outpost that to date has seen more than 5 million missionaries sent forth to every known continent of the world over the past 60 years? Join me in this episode of Love Speaks as we look at some extraordinary examples from salvation history and the history of this missions outpost itself to learn more about this common way of hearing the voice of God, visions. This is a collection of virtually untold stories of salvation history, an ongoing narrative where we find that God has been faithful to appear and speak in every generation. And because he's been that faithful, he'll appear and speak to you and I in our own generation. Each film in the series will document a new way in which you yourself can learn to hear the multifaceted voice of God. Come along with me as we journey together and discover that love speaks. Hello, I'm Carl Wesley Anderson welcoming you to this episode of Love Speaks. You know, we're in the middle of this series looking at the Trinity, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. We've already seen a couple of episodes how Jesus is speaking through both the preaching of his word and through other believers speaking confirmations. Now we're in the middle of the Holy Spirit. And these next three films are all sort of a trio of looking at just how the Holy Spirit speaks from within. Now, as we look at visions in this episode, We're gonna dive back into salvation history in just a few moments and discover the life of a saint you've probably never heard of from the ninth century, but was led by visions to go to the nations of the world. In fact, the unreached people groups of his day. Before we go to salvation history though, I thought we'd start back on that island of Kona in Hawaii where I began this episode. Why? Because I was actually standing at the base of a wonderful mission called Youth with a Mission, or YWAM. And I interviewed there the founder, Lauren Cunningham. So what I wanted to do initially was to go back to Hawaii and talk to Lauren a little bit about a foundation of hearing from God. Because if you and I are gonna hear from the Holy Spirit, we need that foundation, and that foundation, of course, is relationship, isn't it? So we're gonna go back to Lauren now in Hawaii And then we're going to transition from Lauren in Hawaii off to Washington, D.C. to meet a modern leader named Kevin Winters. Kevin's a friend of mine, a fellow author, and he's written several books on how you can hear the voice of God through visions and through dreams and other ways. But I wanted to lay this foundation first of relationship with Jesus. So now we are off to Hawaii. I'm more than thrilled to say I'm here today in Kona, Hawaii on the Big Island with Lauren Cunningham. Lauren, you're the founder of Youth with a Mission, or as it's become beloved in the nation's YWAM. First of all, thank you for joining me for these, uh, for these thoughts and stories. Aloha, Carl. You are welcome. And that's the way we say it here in Hawaii. Aloha. Let me try that. Aloha. Yeah, that's right. And what does aloha mean? It means the sharing of of the spirit and of breath. Awesome. Let me read you a quote that you give in here and have you comment on this. (sighs) Guidance is first of all a relationship with the guide. Tell me about that. What the Bible is about is relationship. And it's first a relationship with God and secondly the horizontal with one another or in family or in business or in all categories of society. It's all based on relationships, which is based on the truths of God's, God's word. So when we understand that the, the Bible is about relationships, 
then when we begin to understand relationship doesn't happen unless there's communication. So communication with God, you're saying, it's based on our relationship. Right? Absolutely. It... And the deeper the relationship, the more clarity there is. And of course, that has to do with maturity in that relationship. So let's boil this down. All Christians, all believers watching th this, this moment, everyone can hear the voice of God. Absolutely. That's your, your, not only your responsibility to receive and, and give back, because he commands us to pray, and we're to pray without ceasing. Well, what does that mean? It means a communion with God constantly. Wasn't that inspiring to hear from Lauren Cunningham in Hawaii? Now I've flown to Washington, D.C., and we're gonna meet Kevin Winters. Kevin is an author, friend of mine, he teaches, visions, dreams, symbolic speech. He goes around and he shares this in his books as well. And so it's, you're going to be blessed is all I can say. So Kevin, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't we center visions, dreams, and, and metaphors, symbolic speech, the ways the Holy Spirit speaks on the wonder of relationship with the Lord. Could you talk about that a little bit as a foundation? Oh, sure. Um, if you're going to have a vision or a dream, you have to be able to recognize the source of that vision or dream. How do you recognize the source of something you have no connection to and no relationship with? And so I think it's important that if we're going to be comfortable, because this is not a subject that's often comfortable for a lot of people, if we're going to be comfortable with experiencing visions and dreams, we have to first realize that it is grounded in a relationship and that visions and dreams are a natural part of walking with God. When we consider uh, uh, what Adam and Eve experienced in the garden, one of the things that I thought was fascinating is with all of those different footsteps in the garden, right? It says they recognize God's footsteps. So that type of discernment indicates that there's a level of relationship. And I think relationships, like the relationship we have with our children, relationships are the foundation and building blocks to being able to trust, right? And so that's why what he said makes so much sense. How can I follow you if I don't have a relationship with you? How can I trust you if I don't have a relationship with you? And so that's why I think that what he said was so, it's, it's fascinating. Wow, thank you, Kevin, and also Lauren. I am personally stirred to deepen my relationship with Jesus so that he and I, through the Holy Spirit, can learn in love how to hear the voice of God. Isn't that exciting? So let's look at this way of visions. I wanted to kind of teach you a little bit about what visions are. Now this way actually comes from my book. It's called Love Speaks, 21 Ways to Recognize God's Multifaceted Voice. We're actually teaching today in this film on way number 10, visions. Let me define them for you. They are conscious pictures from the Holy Spirit. That means you are, you are awake, you are alert, you are active in prayer, you are active in that ongoing daily hour by hour relationship with the Lord. And he from out of time speaks into time and into your context and gives you some kind of a picture. These pictures, by the way, flow from the Holy Spirit out your mind as conscious pictures, and they can be either literal for you or symbolic, and they can be either for you or for others. Let's go back in salvation history. Now, I don't know if you noticed my red hair, you probably did. I am actually not Irish, even though I look Irish. I am Viking. For the most part, this red hair came from my Viking heritage. My family's come from Norway and Sweden. And so while I was sort of researching visions, I discovered in salvation history, this unique gem of a story of a man that lived in the ninth century, whom God called in a unique way to reach my people 
through visions. So I'm off now to central Germany to a monastery. Join me as we look at the exciting life of St. Ansgar, also called the Apostle of the North. Our story begins in central Germany at a beautiful monastery named Corvi. Ansgar himself was born the son of a noble Frankish family near Amiens, northern France, in 801, and he died and was buried near Hamburg, Germany, in 865 AD. And from cloisters just like these, a steady stream of missionaries was soon to come forth to penetrate the spiritual darkness of the Nordic nations, beginning with Ansgar. Now, Ansgar's story is fascinating as he was the very first missionary ever sent from the Lord by a vision to begin evangelizing the Nordic nations. So about this time, an open invitation arrives from a rather closed nation. Believe it or not, the king of Sweden himself had heard of the gospel. How? We're not sure, but maybe from a captured slave that was a Christian or perhaps even a monk from Lindisfarne where they had raided in England and he sends a team of ambassadors to Central Europe to the emperor and implores them, hey, send somebody to tell us more about this Christian faith. There are many that want to hear more and perhaps even embrace the Christian religion. So who do you send? Well, on the short list from all the leaders here appeared one name. It was Ansgar. Listen now to this actual moment from his own journal record of when he was invited to be the first missionary to go forth to the Northmen and bring the good news of Jesus Christ to an unreached people group. I am asked whether I am willing on God's behalf to go to pagan nation in order to preach the gospel. I desire with all my strength, that the opportunity for going may be granted to me and that no one may be able to divert me from this design. Saint Ansgar. His whole life was characterized by rigid discipline and self-denial. Get this, he wore a haircloth shirt day and night, and measured everything he ate and drank. He chanted the psalms from the cloisters, just like this, every morning and every evening, and every single day devoted time to meditation of the Word of God. So late one evening, Ansgar was praying and asking the Lord if he should accept this invitation at the possible expense of his own life to visit Sweden. And while praying, he experienced a vision. In the vision, I traveled to a house which were standing many men who had been called to the task of preaching. In their presence, I was suddenly transported in an era of shining light where I heard the voice of the divine saying in love, thy sin is forgiven. Feeling inspired, I asked the voice, Lord, what will you have me to do? Again, the voice answered, Island, listen to me. Pay attention. Remote as people, go and declare the word of God unto the nation. Saint Ansgar. As Ansgar prayed over this vision, he wrote this in his journal. In pandering my invitation to Sweden, most of that country consisted of Ireland. And also, since the Lord declared in his word, I will make you the light of the nation so that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. I decided to say yes since the end of the world in the north was the Swedish territory. 
sent and God. Now to our modern understanding with our globes and satellite imagery, we know that Sweden is not the very end of the world and that the world is not flat, but round. But remember, these are the ancient times and to them the world was flat. The maps only went so far and after that, you fell off into the unknown outer darkness. So to Ansgar and his contemporaries, they were quite literally following the call of Jesus right before his ascension in Acts 2 to take the good news, the gospel, to the very ends of the earth or the edges of the map. So I'm off to a very ancient edge of the map. I'm off now to Scandinavia. Well, as you've just seen from the map that I showed you, I didn't actually make it to Scandinavia. I'm here instead in Moorhead, Minnesota. Exciting place to come. Here's why I didn't make it to Scandinavia. As you know, in the last segment, I was all set to go, but we filmed this during COVID. And so three days before my crew and I were scheduled to arrive in Denmark and Sweden, the gates were closed and no Americans were allowed in. But I came here to Moorhead, Minnesota, because this is a very special city. This Viking ship was actually hand hewn and created as an exact replica of a Viking ship that was discovered. And it was actually sailed from the harbor, just kind of across the state of Minnesota in Duluth, all the way to Bergen, Norway. Yes, it made it to the open seas. We're here to look at the mission of St. Ansgar, to the Vikings. So kind of a solemn moment as I'm pondering this people group that the Lord called Ansgar to. This is my people group, by the way. I am part Norwegian. So we're talking about the Scandinavians that I myself am descended from. Now they were farmers, they were tradesmen, they were craftsmen, but they were also Vikings. And at times they spelled terror to the Christian monks that were now sprouting up all over the territories of the UK and Northern Europe. These Vikings brought forth with them destruction. They were pirates. They were terrorists of their day. And yet Jesus Christ had a heart to reach them because he died for them too. Let's listen in now to an eyewitness account from Ireland of just how terrible the Vikings were. into captivity the Christian people, to destroy the churches and burn the towns. Everywhere there was nothing but dead bodies, clergy and laymen, nobles and common people, women and children. There was no road or place where the ground is not covered with corpses. We live in distress and anguish before this spectacle of the destruction of the Christian people. Eyewitness account of the Northmen, 9th century. Wow, that was quite a sobering description of the Vikings. They were terrorists of the day, at least the raiders and pirates were. And if you think about the virgin soil that Ansgar stepped into, it had been steeped for thousands of years in spiritual darkness. And in fact, we're 800 years past the original preaching of the apostles before the first missionary comes forth to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those that built these incredible ships. Well, let's transition now from the tale of St. Ansgar, who was led by visions in prayer 
to another man, a young man in prayer some 60 years ago, whom we saw earlier in this episode, Lauren Cunningham. Yes, I'm back to Kona, Hawaii, where we're going to hear the tale and the journey of a young man led by a vision, and it's still bearing fruit, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to the very ends of the earth. Lauren, I'm honored to be with you. I'm here with Lauren Cunningham, who is the founder of Youth with a Mission. As you can see behind us, we have the flags of the nations of the world. Now the flags that are here are flown according to the nations that are on campus at that time. And uh, we've, we've just had the young people leave uh, this week earlier uh, to uh, all the continents, and they're, they're in 35 nations now. And, uh, sharing the good news of salvation. And that's just from this one place because we are in 785 locations with the University of the Nations around the world in 163 countries. So they go from everywhere to everywhere. We come in all sizes and shapes. We come in every beautiful skin color that God ever made. Let's go to a vision you once had. This is an episode we're looking at visions throughout salvation history. Of course, we're looking now, you're my modern example because I believe you had a vision. I believe you were about 20 years old. We're going back to June 1956. You're in the Bahamas. You've got your Bible open. So the, the, this is anchored, of course. You're reading the word. What happened? I was to speak that night to a couple of hundred young people evangelistic uh, opportunity. And so I was praying, actually kneeling by the bed in a missionary's home. They'd given me this one room. And, uh, and as I was praying, the Lord gave me a picture in my mind, a video, it was alive. And uh, he speaks to us out of our, our own world. I loved surfing when I was a kid out in Santa Monica. And so I'd, I'd love to ride the waves. I never had a surfboard. The rich guys up at Malibu had the surfboard, but I used my chest. And uh, he showed me waves coming in. Well, I always knew that the ninth wave was the big one. That's, you know, me, my buddies and me, we, we always stuck with that one. Another group, they said, no, it's the seventh wave. And I say, well, they were a different denomination of surfers, you know. <laughs> but uh, as I was, starting to see these waves, I could shut my eyes and see it. I could open my eyes and see it. It was the same picture. And the waves got bigger and bigger and bigger as I began to recede above the world in my, in my view, from my view. And so as I saw it, I was seeing that this was happening all over the world. And the waves, I, I went to nine and they kept getting bigger. And, and as they swept across the continents of the world, they became waves of young people, millions and millions of young people sharing the love of God. And uh, as they were sharing, I, they were from everywhere to everywhere. And this was something I, I just said in my heart, if you're gonna do this, I wanna be a part of it. And, uh, and so the Lord has allowed me that. So let's just frame this for our audience. You're in prayer, you got your Bible open, you're on your knees, and a picture, like a movie, just opens up before you. That's what a vision is. Yes, yes, it's, it's visual. It's visual. And could you have even imagined at that moment, you'd be sitting here today uh, with uh, youth with a mission now in more than 190 nations, You've had, uh, how many millions of young people have gone through short-term missions? Well, short-term is over five million. Five. I got that n number at the beginning of this past year. So, Lauren,
anymore and let's fast forward to a time that if the Lord doesn't return before your last day on this earth, what I would like you to do is, as a Moses, speak to us as Joshua's, right into that lens and share with us from where you are in, in heaven, but share with us, to those of us left on earth, pass on to us a legacy message of what of whatever you'd like to say to us to encourage us to keep going forward. The Bible says that we love because God first loved us. And if you really love God, you want what God wants. And let me take you to Revelation 7, 9, that's future, where around the throne of Jesus, in robes of white, these are the redeemed. They're gonna be there from every nation, every tribe, every ethnicity group, and every language group and it's going to be a multitude no one can count. What the Father wants is a family that is so big they can rule and reign with Him eternally. It's the Father asking you to do this. Through His Son, and Jesus said, to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every person, but also disciple all nations. That's all ethnic groups, and that includes even language groups. So do what the Father wants and do it because you love him and do it because you give him your whole life that's what it does and you are to reach your generations that are alive in your time and that's your uh, great commission god bless you for what you're going to do for him well this has been quite the journey, hasn't it? From all the way back in the ninth century of St. Ansgar to modern examples of how the Lord is speaking through visions. I'm fired up. I want to start getting visions in prayer. I don't know about you. And so let's go forth, get the visions that the Lord has for us, both for our lives and for those unreached people groups around us in the nations, because he's still speaking, calling us to go forth and become a champion of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all those around us. And he wants to lead us through visions. Oh, well, yeah, Dan, always remember, keep listening, keep listening, keep listening. To learn even more about this way or any of the 21 ways to recognize God's multifaceted voice, visit us at lovespeaks.today. Coming up in our next episode, learn how love speaks through dreams and what are known as visions of the night seasons. You'll be inspired on our walk through salvation history as we learn how God led St. Patrick himself through dreams to transform a world of pagan darkness in Ireland into the glorious transforming light of Jesus Christ. Join me in Love Speaks, episode 11. As you're watching today, maybe you're like some of the people that I've met on many of my travels overseas who are questioning, where is God? Where is the voice of the Lord for me today? I myself had to face that question as I went through and had to endure a four-year battle with cancer. I discovered, though, that the Lord's voice was super strong for me, that he was initiating contact with me on a regular basis. I've even gone to the Word and found there so many instances of the Lord initiating that contact and speaking to people in unique ways. So I've compiled 21 of them. I have a new book, it's called Love Speaks, 21 Ways to Recognize God's Multifaceted Voice. I also have a masterclass teaching series and some other great resources for you. And I encourage you, visit our website, lovespeaks.today, and you'll discover there some great tools to help you learn to hear the voice of the Lord. You can hear God's voice for yourself. As a son or daughter of the Almighty Father, you have a right to listen to him. And he is initiating contact with you every single week. So my new book, 
Love speaks 21 ways to recognize God's multifaceted voice will bring you forward into multiple contacts with God. It is one of those rare books that you read where every page makes you stop and think and reflect and then say, that's amazing. As I've journeyed with God for some two decades, I've learned to go on this adventure of hearing His voice and I found there are multiple contacts with God, my Father, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit every single week.